Hi everyone, welcome to today's workshop, Collaborate, Me, and Work Remotely. My name is Milani Fox. I am from the Three Affiliated Tribes out of North Dakota. Um, I currently work with Indigenous Education Inc., uh, home of the Kobo Scholarship Program, and I am partnered up uh, with the Indian Country Digital Trainers Program with Grow with Google. And so today we are providing you this training so you can get all the tools that you need to be successful with working remotely. Um, this is the day and age where working remotely is more of a reality than a dream. <laughs> um, everyone really does assume that working remotely can be something that is easy to transition to. However, there are plenty of tips and tricks as well as tools provided to you to be able to, so you are able to be as successful as possible um, with your business, if you're a student. Uh, working from home, however that may look like, these tools are for you. So, we all know at by now what it means to work from home. Distractions all around you, plenty of to-dos with work, home, children, what you're going to make for dinner tonight, um, can be super distracting with what you're trying to do for your, your business, for your organization. And so here are a couple of tips for you to be successful um, working from home. So develop a routine or keep your current routine. Um, if you'd normally wake up, work out, take a shower before work, keep doing that because it sets your day up for success so you know exactly what to expect when sitting down, turning on your computer, and getting to your day. Maintain regular hours and set a schedule. Um, it provides a sense of normalcy in the current world of working from home and really trying to figure out um, the everyday aspect of that. Create a dedicated workspace. Find a spot to go to work in your home at the same place every day. If you don't have a luxury of a dedicated office at home, at least go to the same place, such as your table, or if you have a comfortable place on your couch, or a lazy boy, just somewhere you know that you can post up for a few hours and you're able to really get the things that you need to get done done in a comfortable manner, without too many distractions, of course. Also, make sure you have your favorite chair. Don't just switch back from the couch to the lazy boy, back to the couch again. Um, it can really be hard on the body physically if you're slouched over all day, if you don't really know um, a good posture to keep. It can really affect you in the long run. So working from home, it, it, it definitely takes a toll on the mind, but it can also take a toll on the body. So just be conscientious about where you're posting up during the day. Also, make sure you give yourself a break. Make sure to also add them to your schedule. It's easy to eat at your desk when you're at home. Also, don't sit in front of your computer for eight solid hours. Every hour or so, stand up and walk around to give your body and your eyes a break. Um, I know personally, when I was working from home, I was, I was pretty stuck in front of my computer for work and for school. Um, I One day I clocked in about 13 hours of screen time. Um, and that's very, that's not healthy. <laughs> and also it can get you burnt out relatively quickly. So make sure you're giving yourself a break, even set yourself timers on your phone, on your watch, whatever that may look like. Um, just give yourself a few minutes to go get, um, you know, uh, some fresh air or a glass of water, whatever that may look like to you. Also make sure that you have the tools to get through your work successfully. Don't struggle with that one screen if you're working with spreadsheets and emails and video conferencing. Make sure that you have that extra screen if you need it. Create a budget or approach your boss and let them know that you need this to be successful in your workload. Also, don't undermine creating a to-do list. Personally, I'm a mother and I'm also a professional, I'm also a student, and I have my, high, my side hustles on the side. So I have multiple to-do lists. I have my 
keep your child alive to-do list, I have my work to-do list, and I also have my outside activities to-do list as well. Don't underestimate getting yourself organized using the old-fashioned notepad and pencil. That's what helps me the most, but also I do utilize um, online uh, platforms as well. We all know when you work from home, things can come up. And also, maybe you just need a break and that you want to go and do that extra task around your home. And your coworkers are going through the same. So provide them a little bit of grace. If you're working from home, there also may be such things as children who are going to school um, remotely as well. Some animals in the background, maybe their neighbors mowing the lawn. Just be aware that there may be outside noises that may be a little distracting but we'll go into some tips and tricks on how to minimize those um, distractions when, when working from home. Most importantly, when you're at home, dedicate a time when you shut that computer and that when you're done with the day, the work is done. When you leave your office for the day and you go home, you're not gonna be working, so treat working from home in the same manner. Close up shop, close up your laptop, and leave it for the day. Make sure that you can differentiate what you're doing with work and what you're doing at home. Today, I'm gonna to show you some Google tools to help you stay productive no matter where you are, so you can successfully collaborate, meet, and work remotely. First, we'll talk about Google Meet and Calendar to help you communicate from anywhere that you may be. Working from home, working from that coffee shop, these tools will provide you the best support to be able to get the work done. Last, I'll introduce some additional Google training resources, which we will talk about once we get to that screen. Everything I'm going to show you today works with both Google Workspace and what Google calls the consumer version of these tools. It means that you are the user, you are the ones making them work for your work, your lifestyle, whatever you may need them for. Um, and that's what you probably call your regular Google account or maybe your personal Google account. In the few places where things are different, I'll let you know. So first things first, make sure you have a Google account. You can sign in using your email and your created password, or if you haven't created an account yet, it's really easy. Just go ahead and click the sign up and get started to access your Google Workspace. If your business or employer uses Google Workspace, you may have an email address that doesn't look like a, G a Gmail, which is the at gmail.com domain, um, but it can still work with a Google account. If you aren't sure if your work is a Google Workspace or not, check with your team at work or your IT provider. Let's start off with learning on how to communicate from wherever you are. So for the first tool that we're going to be talking today is Google Meet. Um, you're probably used to meeting with your coworkers, clients, teams, or even friends face to face, maybe in a conference room or over coffee, but that's not always possible when everyone is working from a different place. Especially during the year of COVID-19, everyone is definitely working from home and you can't just meet up with a coworker to work on a project. So virtual platforms are in high demand right now. And one of the great ones that Google provides is Google Meet. Unlike a regular phone call or audio conference call, Google Meet gives you some of the benefits of face-to-face -face meetings, even if you can't be in the same room. It's easy to set up a video conference and meet and share the link with the people who you want to attend. Setting up a meet is available to everyone who has a Google account, even if it isn't a Google Workspace account. So be aware. You need to be signed into Google to create a video meeting, but you do not need a Google account to participate in the Meet video call. So make sure whoever is organizing the Google Meet call that they have a Gmail account and that they can access all these tools to be able to organize the meeting for your, for your coworkers or your work circle. If you have an existing Google account, for example, if you're an at gmail.com user, sign in at meet.google.com to get started. If you don't have a free Google account, you can create one using your work or personal email address of choice. The only thing is that there is an additional security measure and you'll only need to do it once. And you can create a Google account at accounts.google.com. 
With Meet, people can access your meeting from their computer, tablet, or smartphone. You don't need any plugins or any type of special software. If you're connected to the internet, you can connect on Meet. On the screen here, you can see what it looks like when you do when you utilize the Meet application on your phone. Um, just be aware that any device that you use, you may have limited access to different applications. So just think about what your meeting's about, if you need to pop up some screen sharing or if you need some team access to a Google document that you use whatever device is um, better suited to, to your workload. Because so many people are working from home right now, Google is extending advanced Meet capabilities to all Google Workspace customers. That means that people who use Meet through Google Workspace can have meetings with up to 250 participants and they can record meetings too. Um, so for my personal work, I have a lot of colleague circles. It doesn't really extend past 20 people. So the free option is perfectly fine. Um, it just really depends on the demographic that you're reaching out to. So if I'm talking to students, sometimes the audience can reach up to 200 to 300 people where the paid version is the most appropriate for my, um, for our meeting. However, the free account I've always found is, is pretty great. Also, all conferences in Meet are encrypted and the security features are turned on by default. So in most cases, you don't have to do anything to ensure that the right protections are in place. So as I mentioned before, here are a couple differences between the free and the paid plans. Paid plans refer to Google's Workspace accounts or a special option called Workspace Essentials. That includes Google's productivity tool, um, such as Meet, Docs, Slide Sheets, etc., for businesses who want to use their own email calendar system, such as Microsoft and Outlook. As you can see, the free version allows up to 100 meeting participants in a meeting. Meetings can be up to one hour and there's no limit on the number of meetings. So like I mentioned before, just understand who your audience is, understand who you need to meet up with on the regular, and pick which plan is best for you and your organization or your small business. Personally, with my workload and my collaboration partners, I've never had a problem with the free plan of Google Meet but just be aware of whatever you think you might need this option for um, and move forward. To learn more and to compare plans, visit the Google Workspace pricing page at workspace.google.com backslash pricing. So some of the benefits of having Google Meet video conference is that it helps people feel connected. I know in the year 2020, when everyone went remote, it was really impossible to get that face-to-face -face connection that you used to have every day with your peers, with your coworkers. And I know having a tool such as Google Meet is really, really nice to get that time with your, with your people, to have that eye-to-eye -eye connection. It's really nice to have that face-to-face -face time with the people that you're working with, just to make sure that you're all on the same page and make sure that you're all able to um, get the work done successfully. If you haven't tried Meet, here are some ways you can use it. You're probably used to having in-person brainstorming meetings with your team. Try them and meet. If you normally meet with clients in person, encourage your clients to schedule consultations with you via Meet as well. You can even host online classes or virtual get-togethers with Meet. Like a lot of Google tools, there are different ways to stay connected with Google Meet. I'm going to show you two ways to join a Meet video call. No matter where you are, you can access it. You'll have a variety of options that you can use. The easiest way to access Meet is through meet.google.com. This way is perfect for impromptu meetings and conversations. From meet.google.com, all you have to do is click join or start a meeting. Remember that you don't need to have a Google account to participate in Meet video meetings, but if you don't have a Google account, the meeting organizer or someone from the organization must grant you access to the meeting. So if you're not signed into Google or have a Gmail account, you can't join using a mobile device. So make sure whoever's organizing your Google Meet, make sure that they have a Google account. If you want to schedule the meeting in advance, even if it's later than the same day, you can do that through Google Calendar. This is the second way to schedule a Google Meet. You can find your calendar at calendar.google.com. Once you're in your calendar, double click on the time and day when you want the meeting. Add the title and start filling in the details. 
As you can see in here, you can click add Google Meet video conferencing as highlighted on the slide. If you're using Google Workspace, the process of setting up a meeting is super similar. When you click the arrow next to join the Google Meet, you'll see the option to join the meeting by phone. Um, it's always kind of a good practice if you're not able to hear people or if you're having trouble with your audio to dial in using your phone. Um, I've always found that to be a good practice. Within your meeting, you can also click the more options link to add more information about the meeting. That's highlighted right on the screen. Add guests by entering their email addresses, add notes and other options. When you're finished setting up the meeting, make sure to select save. When you save the meeting on your calendar, everyone you invited on the meeting will get an email invitation that looks like the image on the screen with the meeting link highlighted. They'll have the option to accept or decline the invitation. If you go back into the meeting on your own calendar, you'll see who has replied yes and who has said no and who has not replied at all. When it's time to actually start your meeting, go back into your calendar, click on the meeting, and then click join with Google Meet. The image on the screen shows the button you can click within the calendar entry. Everyone you invited to the meeting also accesses the link from their calendar, or they can go into the email and join the meeting from the link there. There's a couple of options. When you click on the link, you'll see a screen similar to this image with a big button that says join now. As you can see, people can join the meeting from their computer or their smartphone. Not everyone has a camera on the computer, but nearly everyone does on their phone. So you just said different ways to initiate a Google Meet video call. Let's look at the different features of Google Meet. Here's a screenshot of how Google Meet looks with many people participating. There are several settings you have control of when attending a meet. You can mute your microphone or turn off your camera. You can do that by clicking on the gray microphone for mute or camera icon for video. On the bottom of the screen, that's where you can see it located. This will add a red microphone icon with a strike through on top of your section on the screen and signals to everyone else that the microphone is off. If someone has their camera off, you won't be able to see a live shot. Instead, you'll see their Google account profile picture or a static icon with just their first initial. Even when people are on a video call, there are times when they want to communicate via chat. This is useful when one person wants to share links or open files. It is also useful when asking for information from a larger group, or participants can send the group a message without interrupting the speaker. Anyone in the meeting can click on the chat icon on the top right of the screen and type a message to the rest of the group. If someone in the meeting wants to show a file or a document that is on their computer with the rest of the group, they can share their screen by selecting present now. That option is highlighted on the screen on the bottom right hand corner. The person sharing their screen may have multiple windows open to their screen. When they select present now, Google will ask what they want to share. They can select what view they want to share with other people in the meeting. Me also allows you to record meetings to Google Drive. Safely storing the recording for the meeting owner after recording is stopped or after the meeting ends. The image here shows an example of what the recording meeting option looks like on the menu. The option to record is helpful for something like a live training session that you want to be able to reference later or share with people who aren't able to attend the training live. You may want to practice using Meet with a friend or a trusted coworker. That'll help you feel more comfortable with the technology and also with how you look and sound on the Meet. Here are a few best practices for having a great Google Meet. When conducting or participating in a video call like Meet, you should keep your camera on. It makes a better impression and helps you stay more engaged. Also, make sure you choose a neutral background to help reduce area clutter and help to lessen the distraction of the audience that you're talking to. Except if you have cats, make sure you always have your cats in the room. <laughs> An external microphone may provide better sound quality than the one built into your device and is especially helpful if you plan to conduct any virtual webinars. For example, I am using a headphone piece with a microphone included within it. However, it is a little bit of um, older technology currently. I am a fan of um, iPods. However, we're choosing this route today. Last, when you're not speaking, mute your microphone and limit your moving around so not to distract the person from speaking. Now we're going to talk about another Google tool you can use to work with people anywhere. 
You've probably been in a situation where someone on your team created a document or a spreadsheet, they emailed it to you and then someone else on their team, and then asked for your thoughts. So you opened the file, made some changes, saved it as version two, and emailed it back. Your teammate made her own changes and then saved it to her own file. After a few days of the three of you sending emails back and forth, no one knows which one is the correct version. So that's where Google Drive comes into play. By storing files in Google Drive, you can share access to files and everyone can share it and make their changes to one file in real time. First of all, you can see those changes. Signing into your Google account allows you to access all the products you see here. You only have to sign in once and you'll be able to access your Google Sheets, your Docs, Slides, Photos, Forms, Gmail, Calendar, and all the other applications available. The screen here shows the icons of each Google applications that are available for your use. Select the Google Apps icon. Here you'll see all the Google applications that come with your account. Use the Google Apps menu to move between applications. Let's start off with Google Drive. You can find that by clicking on the grid icon at the upper right hand corner of the screen, such as the animation shows. If you're already in another Google app like Gmail, you can find the grid icon on the upper right hand there too. When you click on the grid icon, you'll see that the Google Drive icon as well as icons from other Google applications. Most likely the ones you use will be the ones to show up first. Also, there is the option where you can arrange your Google icons. Me personally, the first section, I have all of my most used icons, which of course is YouTube, Gmail, Google Sheets, and Calendar. The link in the quick tip here goes to step-by-step -step instructions on everything you need to know about Google Drive, including uploading files from other software programs like Word and Excel. You can also access Google Drive as well as any of the other individual apps from your mobile device. The screenshot shows what the Google Drive icon looks like on the iPhone. When you store your files in the Google Drive, you can access them anywhere, anytime you are connected to the internet. And if you know there's a good chance you will be going without internet access, you can turn on the available offline setting for your files so you think you might need offline. We'll go into that in a few minutes. As I mentioned earlier, Google Drive is a tool that allows you to save all kinds of files in one location. This slide shows a screenshot of my drive that shows all your saved documents, PDFs, and slides presentations. When you store your files in your drive, you can give different people access to different files. For example, you created a draft agenda for a big event and you want everyone in your event planning committee to have access to the agenda. That's the path I'm showing you here on the left side of your screen but you also have a budget file and you only have one person that you wanna have access to that. That's the path on the right side of the screen. Even better, you can give different people different levels of access to each file. People can either have access to edit the file, comment on the file without editing, or just view it without the ability to comment or make changes on it. You can also give people access to a complete folder and store a group of files in that folder. In that situation, everyone who has access to the folder will also have access to the files within the folder. And yes, you can also give access to people outside of your organization. That makes us perfect for sharing information with like clients or members. Now I'm going to show you how to create and collaborate on individual files. In order to create one of these files, you need to be in your Google account. The animation on the screen is showing how to create a document in Google by clicking the big plus sign button on the top clicking on Google Docs in the menu, and then opening the From a Template option. I'm going to use Google Docs for my examples in this training, but starting a new file and collaborating on that file is the same for Google Docs Sheets, which is Google's Spreadsheet app, and Slides, which is Google's Presentation app. This presentation you're seeing right now was created in Google Slides. What's great about these tools is Google lets you start a blank file, or you can start off with one of the templates each tool provides. You can even create a default template to match your organization's style. When you're in your drive, like in the image I'm showing you now, click on New. Select the type of file you want to start and then select if you want a blank file or one from a template. If you're already in the Docs app, your screen will look a bit different, but the process is similar. Whether you're using a template or starting from a blank file like this in the image, the first thing you want to do is rename your file. Google automatically saves your work and the files for you. If you don't name it right away, you'll end up with a bunch of files in Google Drive all called Untitled Document, Untitled Spreadsheet, or Untitled Presentation. Today, I'm not going to show you how to use the basic word processing features in Google Docs. 
If you want information on how to use them, you can go back to grow.google slash remote work for more training on that. And at the end of today's presentation, I'll share even more training resources with you. I want to show you a feature that makes collaboration easier. Once you create a document, you might want feedback from other people. I already mentioned you can share files with other people. As I'm showing here, there's a blue share button at the upper right corner of the screen. When you click on that, you can add the emails of the people you want to share it with and also assign their editing level. Here's how you can add comments to your files and ask others to contribute to them. First, click on or highlight the word phrase you want to comment on. In this example, we used, have we started looking for her replacement? There are a couple of different ways to add a comment. I recommend you go to the top of the screen and find the plus icon. At the top of the example here, we added a call out that says add comment and that's where the plus icon is. Click the plus icon and you'll get a little pop up where you can type in your comment. When you do that, everyone who has access to the file can see the comment as well. But you can also alert or assign someone to the comment using the at sign. Once you do that, you're given an option to assign the comment to that person as well. This comment is assigned to Pamela, so she now knows she's responsible for answering and resolving the comment made. When you alert or assign a comment to someone, they get an email notification. They can go into the document, read the comment, reply back, and make changes. Any resolved comments disappear from the sidebar of the actual file, but all the communication is stored in the comment area, which can be accessed through the small gray call-up box near the larger blue share button. This process works the same way in Google Sheets and Slides. Here is an example of how the collaboration feature looks in Google Sheets. The screen shows where Pamela has assigned a comment to Randy. And here's an example of how the collaboration feature looks in slides. We are showing where Cursor has assigned a comment to Madison. You can also save a file in another format, such as a PDF. Here's a screenshot of how that works in Google Docs. Just go to the file menu, click download, and you'll see your options. If you were in Google Sheets or Slides, you would be able to download those files into any other similar spreadsheets or presentation types. And in case you're wondering, you can also open files that are built in other tools like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. You can do that by going to File, then Open. As I mentioned earlier, you may want to access some files offline. The Make Available Offline feature will allow you to access, edit, and save work in the files you indicate when you don't have an internet connection. However, you do need to set this up while you do have internet connection. In the screenshot here, I'm showing you how to go to the file menu, scroll to make available offline and click to enable. Be sure you enable this feature for any files you think you'll need offline before you get stuck with no internet. Also, make sure to do this on the device that you want to access the file offline. For example, if you want to use your phone to access a file while offline, go to the file when online from your phone and adjust the setting there. So now we're going to jump into a quick recap. And also I'll share some resources Google has to offer that you can access remotely. There are many different learning paths and options, so explore all these tools and determine which ones make the most sense to you right now and for your work. Let's talk about the next steps to successfully collaborate, meet, and work remotely. First, try using Google Meet. Get used to it so you can have all your video meetings with others. Then become familiar with Google Drive and all the functions of sharing files, commenting on them, and assigning action items to other people. I think you'll find this will make you much more efficient. And explore the training options Google has to offer. Most likely you'll find something that's right for your needs. Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides are not the only apps that Google offers. You can also explore forms to create surveys to collect feedback, access sites to create your own website for a business or to share your work portfolio, photos to share all your images in one place, YouTube to learn or share through video content. If you want to sharpen your business and marketing skills, check out Primer. This is a free app you can download to your phone. If you have an Android device, you can download it on Google Play. If you have an Apple device, you can download it from the App Store. This has a series of short, fun lessons that are all less than five minutes each. This image shows how Primer looks like on the mobile app, with the home screen for the tips for building a successful website course. Another great resource is our quick help videos. Get answers and learn how to make the most of Google tools in just a few minutes. 
You'll learn things like how to get your business listed on Google search and maps, how to create a YouTube channel for your business, and how to create Google Meet Conference. Check out the playlist on g.co slash grow slash quick help. Grow with Google is a new initiative to help people prepare for work, find jobs, and grow their business. Job seekers can grow their skills in order to find new jobs and advance their careers. Teachers can learn how to put the latest technology to work inside and outside of the classroom. Small business owners can build their online presence and find new customers. Startups can learn how to get their ideas and the exposure they need to succeed. Developers can sharpen their current skills and master new ones. To learn more, visit google.com slash grow. This slide shows more of the online training and tools available at google.com slash grow. Here are all the resources that I talked about today in our presentation. Check out these websites for more in-depth information in what I covered. Now this is the end of our presentation. Thank you to everyone who's attended. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll be able to get to them later. My name is Milani Fox and this is Grow with Google.